Hey, how you doing? Thanks for downloading the show. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio. My name is Eric. I host this uh, eclectic DIY podcast. I also have a very eclectic YouTube channel, also called Garden Fork, and it's me and my friends talking about what we hope are interesting things. Today, we're basically going to lift a whole podcast that Nicole Harkin did on Cool Tools, and we're going to talk about each thing. <laughs> because we have no original ideas of our own. We have nothing to talk about, so we're like, let's talk about Nicole being on the other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good afternoon, my friend. How are you? I'm good. I um, we uh, I just went to the grocery store, and I stopped in at the nursery looking for sugar snap peas because my sugar snap pea seeds did not germinate very well. Mm. And I ran across fig trees instead. So trees are wonderful. $90 later, I have two small fig trees that are going to be in my backyard in Brooklyn. So really, do you know one of the amazing things about fig trees is when you prune them, if you cut a length of each limb about four inches and stick it upright in the ground or in soil, um, you know, whether it's a pot or whatever, yep. they will usually root and, um, and flower and bloom. So you can, uh, have a, an entire grove of fig trees, or you can recover that $90 that you spent, uh, selling them for five bucks a piece by the side of the road. Okay, so we're, we're going to talk about Nicole's podcast later. We're going to talk about fig <laughs> trees right now. So my neighbors, a bunch of my neighbors in Brooklyn have fig trees. Uh, I think fig trees came to Brooklyn with uh, um, people from coming from Italy. And because we live in row houses and all the backyards connect and point to each other, essentially we're a walled, it's a giant walled garden. Right. So each block, you know, I have, I'm on one block, the block behind me is another, and we have the avenues. And so you can get through the, into the backyards. There's a couple of places where people have like a, a flat, instead of a garage or a house, there's a little entryway, but it is a microclimate that is, I would say four to five degrees warmer than, you know, your weatherman weather, you know, maybe even 10 degrees. Because this this is a very common growing technique in, um, in uh france particularly yes the, uh, we've, you'll, we've, you'll, we've, go ahead <laughs> no uh, probably the uh yeah we're talking over each other the uh uh what was that um the uh, tools thing um ancient tools antique tools uh, oh the guy that said uh, low tech is is low, low tech, tech low, low tech, tech website it. yeah yeah uh, he did a great piece on that, and uh, it's amazing how well this works. Please go ahead. I interrupted you, which I will do frequently. That's right. That's why I love you, Rick. <laughs> but so you've got brick and cement. Um, so you've got this big heat sink that's been heating up all summer, and it takes an awful long time to let go of that heat. And so it holds it all winter. So fig trees, which are Mediterranean, you can overwinter in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, as long as you have it in the backyard, I think. Because I've read where people are like, oh, I have to wrap it in burlap and then plastic, and I have to try and bury the top of it and mulch. And my neighbors cut theirs. They they prune them back. but Brutally. They just they come right back, and they fruit. And my backyard has been mainly a dog run with wood chips. You know, we have a little concrete area with some chairs and a table, but it's mainly a dog run with wood chips with the pups. And then I was like, you know, I could probably put some fig trees in here and the dogs might not kill them. So first I started looking for fig trees at uh, nurseries that ship, you know, nurseries like down in South Carolina or something. And I ordered one and it came and it was pretty beat up and it was about a foot and a half tall. And I put it in the ground and I forgot. I was like, Oh, I should wrap this with some uh, of that plastic core, that plastic um, fencing to keep the dogs away from it and they knocked the thing over (laughs) (laughs) yes so then it was too late in the season to try and find fig trees so i bought some fig trees on of all places etsy Hmm. i wouldn't have never never thought of this so I, i wouldn't have either yeah they came and they were much smaller and 
almost dead. And so my neighbor is a botanist and he's like, well, I'll try and revive these for you. And then today I'm up in Connecticut and I went to the uh, Moscarelli's Nursery in Torrington and I was looking for sugar snap peas, seedlings, and I ran across a Chicago hardy fig tree and Mm -hmm. a brown turkey fig tree. And they were brown turkey. Yeah, yeah, they're forty two dollars a piece. And I bought them. (laughs) Good for you. (laughs) And then now this guy walks up and goes, where are you going to plant those? I said, in Brooklyn. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then this other lady walks over and goes, Brooklyn, where do you live in Brooklyn? I used to be in Carroll Gardens. I said, oh, I'm in Sunset Park. So all because of fig trees, I met two other gardeners right. who didn't know that I'm this world famous YouTuber, you know. <laughs> you're famous. You're you're a legend in your own mind. Yeah, you know? I'm a legend with about 1,200 people, which is just fine with me. <laughs> uh, you know, I have a uh, the uh, turkey fig. Uh, brown turkey fig and it is a good sweet fast growing very hearty and my nemesis now are squirrels blue jays mockingbirds and june bugs because they all love them and uh, frankly i cannot uh, begrudge the squirrels the uh, blue birds uh, or the uh, the blue jays or the mockingbirds um, their share of my my bounty in the front yard, which is where my fig is. I have heard that if you wrap them in paper bags, much like peaches <laughs> or apples, you stand a yeah. chance. Well, but it's my tree is so prolific; it, it would be all paper bags. I'd spend all my time out there with a, a construction project, you know. And the homeowners association uh, would be after you. Well, we don't have one of those here. You're we, lucky. Uh, and that's the reason we live here. It's a good combination of services and, and freedom. And the uh, commitment they've made here to uh, green space is just breathtaking. They could have uh, increased their tax rate by 50% just with extra housing. And uh, we have these green belts and parks everywhere in Virginia Beach. And it's such a great place to live. Wow, you could be like the Virginia Beach Booster. I could. I could. What do you think about $5 a month to get behind the scene photos, pictures of what Eric's been up to, some little walk and talks about what's going on in Eric's world, and more pictures of the Labradors, plus just stuff I find cool and interesting that I'm not going to post on Instagram or Facebook because I just, it's just too public sometimes, but I'm happy to share it with people that are in the world of Garden Fork. That's what my Patreon thing is all about. It's people like yourselves are kind of like modern day Medici's, Medici's, Medici's. Um, I'm going to screw that up. But basically supporting someone like myself, a content creator directly, rather than having to listen to ads for Audacity or something like that. So if you're interested, there's a link below to sign up, or actually there's a link below just to find out more information. You don't have to do any signing up, but it's patreon.com slash garden fork, patreon.com slash garden fork. Thank you. But segueing from the green belt, um, Rick and I both own e-bikes. We do. And I bought the wrong e-bike at the get-go, mainly because I didn't read the complete description. It's not a fault of the company, which is Rad Power Bikes. By the way, in the show notes here, there'll be a link to their site. And I'm pretty sure you get $50 off a bike and I get a little finder's fee. Um, if you use that link, if you want to buy a rad power bike, but I bought the wrong size bike and it was, I kept thinking I was doing something wrong or something wasn't right. And then winter came and I just realized I had the bike was too big for me. So I didn't have uh, they have a return policy, but I was past that. And I thought, well, I'll just sell it on Craigslist. And I bought one that I really like. It's more of a cargo bike. It's called a rad runner. I'll link to them in the show notes here. So I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just sell it on Craigslist, right? You know, and so right. I, I forgot the cast of characters that are on Craigslist. <laughs> Go ahead. Even for a bike with a substantial price tag on it, you know. And what I'll, I'll summarize it by saying um, I'm reluctant to call people. They're like, just call me about the bike. I have questions. And I'm like, well, 
I have 10 of you emailing me this, you know, could you, I wrote a very lengthy description. I said, please email with more questions. And three people are like, why are you selling it? I'm like, well, if you just read the first sentence of the description, it says the bike's too big for me, you know? And so I just waited. I just was like, you know, I'd like to have the money and uh, the camera operator would like this bike out of the living room. But finally, um, a gentleman with his full name in the email emailed and said, uh, I've just moved to New York and I would like to buy an e-bike. I've never bought one before. Can I come look at yours? And his second email was, do you prefer cash or Venmo? And I'm like, oh, this is so polite and civil and nice, you know? So he came out and I, the, I said in the thing, I said, the bike is brand new. It has 14 miles on it. And he, he was like glowing. He's like, wow, the bike really is brand new. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't say otherwise, you know, but I guess <laughs> he had had dealt with some other e-bike sellers and it was not as friendly, but we, and I, um, and he didn't have a helmet with him or anything. And I was like, well, do you want to, I showed him the bike and how the, you know, it's a power assist pedal and you can add a little throttle. And I said, uh, he goes, okay. So just hands me the money. And I'm like, well, don't, don't you want to test ride the bike? He goes, no, I will just ride it home, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, he's such a nice guy. And it was such a pleasant experience. I said, look, ride it around for an hour or two. And if you don't like it, I'll, I'll refund your money. So I didn't put the money in the bank. I just put it on the counter, you know? And then I texted him like three hours later. And I said, how's the bike? He goes, it's fantastic. He goes, I rode all the way home to the Bronx, 17 miles. <laughs> oh, wow. And I was like, that's great. Where was your helmet? You know, but anyway, he was just so glowingly happy. And so I, I just want to say that Craigslist isn't always crazy people. There's actually some, uh, there are some blossoms in the mix there. So, yeah, you know, um, We've had a, um, I'm sure everyone's had the same scam that we've had going on Craigslist. You put something up and people will send you a, uh, they'll say, uh, I'm, I'm going to call you, but I want to make sure you're a real person. And uh, uh, I'm sending you these six digits and uh, you're supposed to repeat them back to me when you answer. So I'll know it's you. And it turns out what they're actually doing is uh, finding you, trying to find you online at Facebook or, oh, wow. or Twitter or whatever. And they've applied to reset your password and they've been sent a six digit code. And so they're wanting you to repeat back that six digit code from your telephone number. So they'll have the right number, telephone number to, to go with it. it it's all kind of complicated and weird. Wow. Uh, people say, well, they can get to my bank. And I said, if your bank can get in, if somebody can get to your bank account that easily, something's extremely wrong because I haven't seen a bank yet that wasn't better you know, protected with layers of security. Yeah. But, um, well, but that's still, unfortunate. uh, yeah, well, there's a scam everywhere. Um, uh, so I, and, and I, people are just people, uh, yeah. you know, t uh, times are tough. Uh, it's going to be a little while before everything gets back to normal. She who must be obeyed, uh, as soon as, uh, Dr. Fauci gave the thumbs up, uh, she was on the first thing smoking out of here, uh, headed for Texas to be with her friend Becky, who's driving two uh, trained sheepdogs. I think they're Australian shepherds or whatever, some sort of shepherd, yep. Yep. up to uh, spearfish South Dakota. And so they were, uh, you know, it's either Thelma and, you know, Thelma and Louise, or I, I don't know who they are, but. Uh, they'll, they'll be, uh, she says she'll be coming back. I, I'm not sure, but, uh, she was just chomping at the bit to, uh, get out of the house. I mean, we've had 18 months of very disciplined shutdown and yep. now we're, uh, we're both, um, vaccinated. We're both, uh, you know, well into our, our period, our friend, uh, she and her husband vaccinated. And so, um, you know, uh, you know, vaxxed, waxed, and ready to <laughs> sit on the porch. I mean, it's <laughs> what you do when you get to my age. Yeah, I am vaccinated as well. And I um, I had to go, I had not seen my mother uh, in over a year. And my sister is like, you've got to, you need, I want you to come out here. And my mom called and said, can you please come out? So I booked a flight on Southwest, which is my favorite airline. And um, the whole experience on Southwest was fantastic. Everyone was masked and really well, just very helpful to each other. 
and I was, uh, the airports were a little crowded for me, but I just was, it gave me hope that we have gotten through this thing together with people. And, um, I think a lot of people are all on the same page and I felt it was just, it was just heartening to see people being polite to each other. So that was good. Yeah. And I went uh, to the Waffle House, which was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> the the one that's off the uh, end of the airport, yeah, the runway. Yeah, it's a, if anyone knows St. Louis, it's the one in Bridgeton. I mean, it's not exactly at the end of the runway, but you know, you have to drive around the airport and go with, over this overpass. And then there's and the people that work there are the nicest people in the world. It's just amazing. So, mm. I had a okay. waffle with pecans. And I had a biscuit with gravy, and I had uh, cheese eggs. I did not have any hash browns. I was just um, okay. Yeah, I thought that might put so, me over the edge. <laughs> yeah, so you had to hold your arms out to know whether you were walking or rolling as you yeah. left. It was good. Yeah, it was good. Uh, well, th- things are slowly getting back to normal. It's going to be a little while before everything is both hunky and dory. Uh, I bought just to. Um, I'm I'm trying to make a video. In fact, when you called, I was char- recharging my camera because it'd run down. Um, I bought a new little p- camera. It's a personal camera. It's called an Insta 360 oh. Go Two, and it's only about two inches tall and about half an inch wide, and it has this amazing stability uh, built into it, and so you can rotate it. 360 degrees and it keeps the horizon level uh it's a wonderful toy to be playing with i've attached it to um, the dog's collar and had them walk around with it i'm um doing a little video you attach it to yourself uh has all kinds of little mounts Uh, one of them is a um, a uh, magnetic mount and so you can attach it to the front of your shirt and while you're working it's right at um at eye level and this one is not 360 it's 180 degrees but you can narrow the focus as well and it's just so much fun to play with i'm looking at the uh website right now i'll link to it in the show notes here but that is a very cool camera (laughs) i uh i bought it you know it's, it's big enough the case that it comes in um that you can slip it out of the case but the case it comes in and the camera itself is not much bigger than an iPod's um, case. Yeah. And so it's something you can carry with you all the time. It has uh, probably about 20 or 30 minutes most of uh, video time on it. Uh, Very high quality. um, I think it's 1440, which for this size camera is is pretty good. And um, then the... the, uh, app that goes with it that you put on your computer you link everything together and you can actually uh pan around on the uh, 180 or if you get the 360 version of this camera you can pan around and put the part that you want to see on the uh on the uh, screen for uh, for editing so it's it's pretty fun and it wasn't too terribly expensive and so i i uh, am trying to do a, a lazy man gardening thing and, so as far uh, as a, is, like a series of videos or just one or? Uh, well, right now, just one. But uh, this one I did, I, I figured it out specifically for tomatoes. Uh, you put down uh, a uh, ground cover, a, a woven cloth, the plastic cloth. So you get both air and water through it. And then you take Eric's favorite tool, a torch, and you burn a hole wherever you want the plants yep. and that seals the edges. Then I bought a, um, a really inexpensive auger uh, that goes on my drill and I auger out the place where I want it, add a bunch of uh, plant food and auger that in, mix it and plant through that. And what happens is it's good soil for the, um, the tomatoes, but here the most important thing is it keeps the soil splashing up on the tomato leaves and our soil is just loaded with late blight and early blight and all yep. those different fungal diseases. And it allows me to have bigger, bushier tomatoes that last much longer into the season without getting a disease. 
And but it's also really easy because you don't have to weed the bed. Yeah, I love covers like that. I I I'm like I love it. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this is a series of videos and the camera looks just phenomenal. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I want that. <laughs> the uh, audio is good. If it's too close to your face, uh, you know, it, it gets your breath a little too much, I think. But it comes with a, uh, a clip that you can put on your cap, the bill of your cap, and it tilts up and down so you can get it right. Uh, you preview on your uh, phone so you can see exactly what's in the screen. And then you can work with both hands, uh, which I've noticed, you know, you've had some problems. Uh, well, when you're up on that icy roof with the fire, uh, <laughs> fooling with, a, of all things, a gutter you're going to replace. Um, I, I, my heart was in my throat <laughs> when I was watching you. I said, I wonder if the camera operator wants to sell garden fork after you <laughs> fallen off the roof i just knew you were a goner man well i actually i live to tell the tale so everyone i just posted a video about a leak uh i have a leaky gutter at the top of my building in brooklyn which is a row house it's not it's only three stories tall but um anyway it's a well, i you think you're I, gonna sh bounce? I shot it in the winter and then I forgot about the footage and then I found it on one of my hard drives and I'm like, oh, I forgot about this. So I was like, well, it's spring, but we're going to put out a video about winter. <laughs> yeah, uh, th this is right up there with the one when you're at the uh, the uh, the farmhouse and you're up there hanging off a ladder with a, a torch trying to undo the ice dam on the roof of your house. Oh, yeah. And I said, Man, Man, th nothing is going to go wrong here. What could possibly go wrong? What could go and, wrong? And, <laughs> I mean, you got this huge flame. Leap. You did it at night, so it would really show up. And it was it was brilliant, brilliantly filmed. <laughs> but it was nothing but fire and ice and water running off and you hanging onto the gutter with one hand and trying to film with the other or something. I mean, it was, it was crazy. Uh, you hold the torch in your teeth or the camera or something. I love fire. <laughs> well, so do I. <laughs> uh, the one thing you do have to watch uh, when you um, were doing what I was doing, I used my uh, weed eater. I have a, 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 a propane-driven uh, fire eater, weed eater. Uh, and to make the holes is every now and then the mulch would catch, catch fire and start flaming behind me. And I had Oops. to uh, you know, stamp that out a little bit. Hey, are you shopping locally? I am shopping locally as much as possible as well. If there's something that you need and you can't find it in your local stores and you're going to go on Amazon, would you consider using the Garden Fork Amazon link? It's in a, what's called an affiliate link. We get a finder's fee for sending you to Amazon. It helps pay the bills at the podcast world here. It is amazon.com slash shop slash Garden Fork. That's amazon.com slash shop slash garden fork you know we started off saying we we're going to talk about nicole uh harkin and then we just ignored her poor oh. thing i don't i don't ignore nicole at all she um is uh very active in our facebook group and uh we have an email relationship i guess the word is and she is just a font of ideas and she has her own podcast. It's called Nifty Gadgets for Family Bikers. And she mm -hmm. also has a uh, first book out. It's called Tilt Tilting a Memoir. And she's working on a true life. I'm reading this from the Cool Tools show notes. Uh, a true life novel about her grandmother. And she has a Facebook page called DC Family Biking. So, but she was on the Cool Tools podcast recently. It's episode 275. And she made us look like amateurs. She just was <laughs> eloquent. Um, she could speak into the microphone and um, was a professional podcaster as opposed to you and I, Rick. But... <laughs> But Cool Tools is a podcast where the guests come on and talk about tools that they like. And the first thing she talked about was these uh, small sterilized metal pointed pieces that are called splinter out. She has um, several children. 
and they're great for pulling out splinters. And the two hosts of the Cool Tool show couldn't really wrap their heads around it, but I did. And I'm like, yeah, it'd be great to have something besides these clunky tweezers to get sp- splinters out. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen that work. I've never used one, but I saw somebody that uh, pulled it out. It comes in a little case. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and you know, they just pull that, it just zip right out. Um, and, and it was a pretty good size splinter. But, uh, yeah, it, it's always good to have people who are smarter than you are on your podcast, I think. <laughs> right. So um, the other thing she brought up was that uh, there is a company called um, Chat Books for Instagram, and they will create photo albums from the photos you've posted on Instagram, which is very similar to what uh, our friend Catherine, whose name I spelt wrong in the podcast, um, Mm -hmm. was talking about. She has, instead of photo albums, she selects photos from her photography practice and makes uh printed books i've used blurb which is a neat on-demand printing company and so i was like wow these are like great minds think alike so chat books for instagram you should just listen to the show because it's um cool tools episode 275 and the other thing is she has a inkjet printer it's a canon pixma which is a highly rated printer and my complaint about inkjet printers has always been the inks run out, the the jets dry out, and this is called the Mega Tank printer because you can refill the tanks. Wow! And that was like, because I always want to picture. We want to print out photos of the Labradors or something, and we have. At this point, I have a black and white laser printer because I was sick of the ink jets drying out and they got expensive. One of these right. laser printer cartridges lasts lasts us a half a year. So, but now we still want to print out color photos and I don't really want to go down to the drugstore and do that, you know? Yeah. 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 It's, um, that whole thing for me, it's always the uh, print head drying out is the problem. Uh, there'll be plenty. And that's even more aggravating than an empty, you know, canister because, you know, you're going to your damn it. There's, there's ink in there. How come it won't come out? And it, you know, it smears and, and everything, but, Everything gets better with time if you just wait for the technology to uh, to uh, roll around and, and fix things. What I found troubling is just there's so many inkjet printers people put out on the sidewalk because I'm pretty sure that that printer head is clogged. And you can sometimes, right. on, like there's a trick with Windex. You put Windex into a piece of aquarium tubing and you put it over the the receiving end of the inkjet and press it through with a hypodermic syringe thing. And I'm, I just felt that the printer companies let us down with this technology. It just seemed flawed yet. They flooded the market with them. So, yeah. Well, you know, I um, got tired of my inkjet printer never working properly. And I too bought a, uh, just a little black and white uh, uh, laser printer and it's a, a brother's and uh, the brother's printer. I mean, it's a fax, it's a copier, it's a scanner. It is a, a printer. And the whole thing cost me less than $200. And the cartridges are only like 30 bucks or so. Yep. And uh, they last me because I don't print that much anymore uh, over a year. Yeah, you know, so I'm I'm good with that, but I do miss having the ability to uh, turn out color work. Yeah, Nicole is yelling, not yelling, talking back to the podcast right now. So, um, no, I can see her. She's yelling. She looks like a yeller. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she's going to be on the show soon um, because it's been on my to do list forever to ask her to come on the show. So now I've said mm. it on the podcast. <laughs> I have to make it happen. So. Did you watch my uh, fire pit video I made for Troy Belt? I did. Well done, you. Troy Belt has a, uh, they are a sponsor of Garden Fork. They have a line of chainsaws now. They're affordable. I mean, I have high-end chainsaws, and they are quite expensive, but they have a 20-inch bar chainsaw with a metal engine crankcase, metal engine housing, it's mm-hmm. 200 or 220 dollars, which is a phenomenal price for a saw that big. And that they is. sent me one, 
and I cut up a ton of wood with it, a bunch of ash. And then as a video, I uh, made a fire pit out of a metal drum and a wire on a metal wheel. I was trying to make something really simple from yeah. stuff maybe you could find in a scrap yard or a yard sale or out in the woods. And literally in our woods, there are metal barrels, you know, <laughs> and you're like, OK. Uh, what was in them before they <laughs> they jumped them, I wonder? Well, this one had paint in it, the one I used. Uh -huh. and some of them have uh, oil. But a lot, at least in on many towns, uh, you know, street side curb collection is a recent thing. So you would find a trash pile in the back off the, da the hill on the back of the yard. There's two of them uh -huh. off the back of my woods here. So when the snow melts, you can see bottles and cans and stuff in the woods. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's that's the trash pile. So it's it's not illegal dumping. It's just um, what they it did. was the local dump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's another thing we're talking about. People that want to that move to your area and then want to change all the laws. Yeah. Uh, apparently, up in New Hampshire, where they have no uh, garbage pickup, uh, people move up there because they want the freedom of living in New Hampshire. And the first thing they they want is to start a sanitation department to carry you know carry off the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> okay we're just gonna gloss over that and uh, everything i say you gloss over <laughs> no, I, I, you haven't had to beat me in a while no <laughs> I'm, I'm getting better i'm getting better no, but anyway people, lots, people of, lots of stuff on, going so. on here you know, lots of stuff going on here and i've got um you know we, we talked about the clee uh tomatoes from yes. the clee lab in in florida I sprouted um, 24 tomatoes and got them all in, and they're they're looking wonderful. Um, I've got okra in the back uh, that I'm just uh, putting in today, and so we'll have uh, tomatoes and okra, and uh, I'll have shard and some tower uh, in my tower that I'm growing with a little bit of radish, and I'm also uh, uh, signing. We signed up for our uh, CSA, our Community Supported Agriculture. Okay. Um, Fantastic. local outfit and we get tons of greens every week and it's uh there are a lot of things that are just too much trouble to grow here like squash um yep. i i bat i battle squash bugs and i mean last year i tried to grow uh, a little bit of um cabbage and it was actually kind of a bok choy and i no sooner put those two plants out and there were five cabbage butterflies there to lay eggs on it. Boom. And I said, you know, th this is a, a lost cause. I'll let somebody else worry with about this. And so the uh, the uh, organic CSA that's up on the eastern shore, uh, just across the uh, Chesapeake Bay from us, uh, is doing a wonderful job. Uh, I picked up my uh, delivery yesterday. And it, uh, I took my uh, electric bike, rode it up there, and brought back my delivery. And it's just a um, good way to get a lot of greens, a lot of fresh vegetables into your diet that um, of things that you can't grow yourself. So I love it. We use one um, in Brooklyn. It's uh, Brooklyn Supported Agriculture, and uh, it's a startup. It's a cooperatively. It's a it's a black cooperatively owned uh, business. And um, they have a really good Instagram feed. And this giant bag of food shows up with stuff that it's kind of forces you to cook stuff that you might not normally buy in the store. Oh, yeah, like kohlrabi. Yeah. I I looked at that. And it, if you've never seen a kohlrabi, they're kind of a purplish. And they have these stems coming off the sides as well as off the top. It looks like a uh, Soviet satellite. It does. And you're like. <laughs> What in the world do you do with that? That's Sputnik um, 7. <laughs> yeah. It turns out you uh, you peel it and you slice it, and it's wonderful in uh, salads is yep. the way I've been cooking it. But uh, then there was Tasso, T-A-S-S-O, uh, which is a um, oriental green. Is that, that Tatsoi? Maybe it is. T-A-T-S-O-I. Uh, maybe that's it, Tatsoi. And I haven't cooked it yet, but uh, it works really well in salads, and uh, we need to eat a lot more salads. My, um, I'd started to do a video on my um, uh, 
over the winter growing, lettuce growing, uh, not aquaponic, but hydroponic system. And I never got around to it, but we had fresh lettuce all winter long growing with, um, in a fairly cool place with, uh, just my uh, shop lights. Wow. And, uh, it was wonderful to have some uh, romaine uh, lettuce at least once or twice a week. Uh, I was growing enough for that for uh, a couple of salads. So it made me happy to do those things. Yay. I think we've made plenty of people happy with our 40-minute podcast here. Uh, maybe so. Uh, or or we've ticked off all of them. <laughs> they shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the hell? He's got that guy on again. <laughs> All right, everyone, I will link to uh, Rad Power Bikes with the coupon. I'm pretty sure the coupon's still valid. So, um, And uh, the bikes that I have, um, I, yeah. I just love pedaling that thing, as, as we know Rick loves as well. So if yeah. you guys have put an that... e-bike, we'd like to hear from you. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. Yeah, and put that Insta360 Go2 camera in there, too, just so people oh, yeah. can see what we're talking about. Really versatile uh, little camera for... Uh, all kinds of things. I know everybody carries a cell phone, but this uh, something you can attach to yourself, either magnetically or with a, a hat band or something. Uh, you could do a lot of cool stuff with it. And uh, kids, real photographers, which are the kids now, uh, they're doing wonderful uh, s- skateboarding and and active things, uh, snow skiing, bicycle riding, all that stuff. Okay, well, I got to go outside and plant some okra. I'll talk to you later, my friend. Garden Fork Radio is produced in Brooklyn, New York by Garden Fork Media, LLC. Our executive producer is Jimmy Gooch. You can learn more about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes at hollowbooks.com. The music for our show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com. Thank you.